Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so, you have a question or so? She was trying to ask a question during the break. I said maybe you know people are interested to know that too. Yeah. So is the Mahayana so. text like Abhidharma text based on the Sarvastivadin Abhidharma canon? Uh, no, actually not necessarily, but it just like in general. Uh, well, just take a Sarvastivada as one of the uh, what one of the school. Uh, for example, the Sarawasiwada also always talk about emptiness. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, even though the, the concept of emptiness is different from what the Mahayana, uh, it's not different. Like, it's not that elaborate as the Mahayana, but, uh, but still is a very quite a important notion in the Sarawasiwada Abhidharma. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, take this ex ex example, and later on, some people suspect that was because of that reason. So, but this kind of emptiness concept is not often found in Pali Abhidharma. But in the Sarawastivada Abhidharma is of, often talk, addressed. So that's why we also certainly know that the teachers' background, those Mahayana teachers, even though they are not necessarily directly from the Sarawastivada school or their teachers or their, the, I mean the masters, teachers or their, 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 their study system is still under that. That's why it's say most of kind of like I won't say all, but most of the Mahayana um, school, uh, at least we know the few famous Mahayana teachers, the master in the past, they they did study Sarvastivada Abhidharma. One from philosophical point of view, you could argue that uh, they know that. Uh, let me just switch this off because, as I say, I was usually I don't do this. It's just because I just you know the form may be. Something with really hack, so I, I was kind of uh, carry this with me. Anyway, uh, what, where I was uh, about, yeah, and also because philosophically, uh, Sarvastivada, as I say, it still address emptiness, and you could see that if, in case that, let's say, this kind of concept might not necessarily become very popular in the Pali, because the emptiness is not that popular being addressed in, in the Abhidhamma, in the Abhid Pali Abhidhamma, right? So, so there's no scholarly evidence that it is Mahayana is based on Sarvastivadin, but there's a lot of similarities. Can I understand that? No, uh, the emptiness in Abhidhamma uh, certainly is different from the em emptiness in Mahayana. But the notions are the same, but the, the focus point are different. The notion of, the, say, the emptiness in Abhidharma is on a Four Noble Truth. Okay. So how you, how you, how you understand, uh, for example, like the Sarvastiva Abhidharma, how you understand the emptiness, it's because you, when you meditate, you realize things are changing, and none of things stay ever the same way. So, then how can you call this person or this thing what you thought about is the real, it's not real. Mm -hmm. But if it's not real, you can use a term called that as emptiness. Mm -hmm. So, but by understanding that emptiness, then you know none, none of the thing that what you believe uh, to be real, for example, you think that person is like this. But it's not, in the next moment, it can be like other way, right? So, so you, you, th up with that kind of understood, then that's what we call emptiness. Mm -hmm. So then you understand that emptiness will lead you to understanding the, 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 understanding the nature of dukkha, the suffering. So that is the perspective of the Sarawastivada. But the perspective of what we call nowadays, we understand based on the Nagarjuna understanding. I don't mean all the emptiness being addressed it this way, but now they're the most popular Mahayana as the Nagarjuna, and they understand it's a way, the emptiness as, because everything, if it by condition, then there should be emptiness. But it's kind of different, you know. Uh, they look at the, 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 what they call the factors, quite different, because they look at the conditionality Anything that is by is conditioned, then is empty. Rather than because of 
impermanence, so that is empty. And because of empty, so that is suffering. It's quite a different approach. Okay. Uh, so, mm. so The references determine the agenda, which resulted in uh, Mahayana schools texts. Um, was the Mahayana schools text based on the Saravastavadins, Saravastavadins, like Abhidhamma, or was it based on Theravadins, or is it based on both? Or we don't know. Maybe the Mahayana Abhidhamma was lost or something. Yeah, they, they, they uh. There are, there are several saying, one saying that Mahayana doesn't have the Abhidhamma, but uh, that depends on what schools say that. Uh, it's believed that like uh, certain schools believe uh, they are Mahayana school, but they think that Mahayana have no Abhidhamma. But however, and the other school believe that Mahayana have a really uh, extensive Abhidhamma. So, for example, it's very clear uh, uh, the Vasu, uh, the, the what do you call them? No Vasubandhu. It's um, Asanga. He actually did really compose several Abhidhamma uh, kind of treaties. If you really want to understand the sutra to him, you have to study this, what we call Mahayana system of Abhidhamma, so to understand the sutra. I know it's very confusing, but you don't have to know all the answers now, but I just, because it's such a big picture there, right? And uh, I, I just want to say, some believe that, for example, like a certain school, let's say the Mahana text is one of the famous Mahana texts called the Lotus Sutra, for example. And uh, I don't think they wanted to agree that uh, if you are holding this kind of sutra school, I, did, I don't think they wanted to hold, thinking Abhidhamma is very important. Or they, as a Mahana, I don't think they, they would say that like he was just saying that because he followed the school called Nichiren in the past. Nichiren is actually, in essence, or I would say originally, Nichiren was holding the Lotus Sutra as the main sutra. But later on, it's not, nothing important, only a few chapters is important. And at the end, it's just only the reciting the name of the sutra. The <laughs> Lotus Sutra is, is, is the feast of the practice. But like that kind of school, for example, uh, the Lotus, those who are uh, holding the Mahayana text as a Lotus Sutra, uh, I don't think they, uh, th definitely would say uh, there's no Abhidhamma in the Mahayana. Okay. But the other school like Yogacara, no, there definitely there's Abhidhamma. Because as I just mentioned, Yogacara school, as what we call Yogacara means the, the practice of yoga or the, the, the teachers of yoga school, and definitely, they know Abhidhamma have a big, uh, uh, they, because when you practice that kind of meditation, you still have to learn their system of Abhidhamma as well, right? Okay. The Mahayana Abhidhamma is lost. It's more we don't have it today. I mean, how do you define Mahayana? Yeah, it's, um, and yeah. Uh, because Mahayana is, it, there's is no such thing like in Theravada is very clear. Theravada is come from India. Uh, no, come from uh, that. Uh, the, there was a one the monk who brought the Buddhism into Sri Lanka, and then you have the Pali text, so called the Theravada Buddhism, and then now you have all different types of texts in India, and then uh, that's you could say that chronolo chronologically say that that's early Buddhism, and then you have something later developed. Like they call them as the the philosophical idea called the wisdom school, right? Prajna Vada, mean or the Prajna Paramita, the, the school of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And later on, then you have this called uh, the movement called Mahayana. Mm -hmm. But Mahayana never come from any particular place. Okay? Like you would say America people, so. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it's very difficult to, uh, maybe some part of this, um, Mahayana say, they have Abhidhamma. Some parties say they, we don't have Abhidhamma like that. You know. Okay. It's okay. Just know that the Mahayana, even though sometimes some people write a book, they say, oh, Mahayana have no Abhidhamma. That is not true. That you have to rely on what base, on what, where, <laughs> what type of Mahayana say that. Okay. <laughs> but even if uh -huh. they Uh, 
I mean, to prove what? To prove that whether they have Abhidhamma or not. Now there's a debate of whether they have the Abhidhamma or not. What, who have Abhidhamma or not? Mahayana. No, they, they have their, their own proof already. I mean, Mahayana is not one school. It's a movement. It's a movement. How can you prove that? They you know? It's not like, it's not Mahayana versus Theravada. Some of the Theravada people are also Mahayana. But they practice different things, they have different aims. But they come from the same temple, even so. So they, by that means, they also have Abhidhamma. And also, right now you have two traditions of Abhidhamma preserved in, only in Chinese. Okay, anyway, what is Mahayana is very complicated too. And people write in, there are many PhD for that, and, and <laughs> uh, some people look at it like a movement, and some say that it's whatever. So I just say, I, I, I'm not here to discuss, because I'm sure we come to Mahayana uh, pages, I, I hope that will answer you some of your questions. Just remember there's a term called Mahayana, and people think they're a great vehicle. Okay, yeah. Mm. Okay. Right, why don't we just go uh, the next paragraph, next one, who's reading it? Yeah, in the second or third century. Anyone have the book? Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll tackle this one because it has a lot of weird yeah, terminology. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the second or third century common era, the was relating uh, Abhidharma class, the uh, exponents of the Abhidharma in the northwest India began <coughs> compiling the author authoritative Abhidharma commentary of Orbibasa. This survives in Chinese translation in three different re uh, recensions. Of particular influence were the views of Kasmira and uh, Sarvasivadin, who were who are often simply referred to as Vaibasikas. I don't think. <laughs> In okay. the early centuries of the Christian era, the Sarvastivadins also produced a number of summary Abhidharma manuals, such as Abhidharma uh, Hardaya of uh, Dharma Sri and also Abhidharma uh, Tarasa of uh, Gosaka. But by far the most influential manual for later Chinese and dependent Buddhism is uh, Vasu Bandhu's uh, Abhidharma Kocha. <laughs> And the influence of this work is to be explained in part by the fact that for the Chinese and Tibetan, its author is none other than Vasubandhu, brother of Asanga, the author of some of the seminal treatises of the Yogacara, one of the principal school of Mad Mahayana uh, Buddhist thought. The traditional view has been disputed by uh, modern scholarship, notably by Frau Waldner, who has argued that a uh, Mahayananist uh, Mahayanist. Vasubandhu, author of Yagachara treatise, lived in the 4th century common era and must be distinguished from the Vasubandhu who is the author of Abhidhamma Kosha and lived in the early part of the 5th century. The question is unresolved. Whoever he was, Vasubandhu's Kosha gives a masterly survey of Savasivada by Vasika, Abhidharma supplemented by his own critiques of certain position, which often betrays a Sautran Sautrantika sympathy. Such was the authority of uh, Abhidharma Kosha that Paramartas and Xuanzang's Chinese translation in the 6th and 7th century respectively led to the formation of the significant, if not relatively short-lived school of Sino-Japanese Buddhism named after a text, the Kosha, or in Chinese Japanese Juse, or Kosha school. Wasubandu's criticism of certain Vaibhasika uh, position prompt further works that attempt to address his points of criticism, such as Sangabhadras, Abhidhamma Samaya, pa, Pradipaka. Pradipika. Just really like a, like a, like a Spanish. And anonymous Abhidhamma Dipa. Yeah. All right, anyway, I think this is a long, complicated. <laughs> Do you really think that we need to explain that? No. Nope. Okay, yeah. Just, we can pass that, right? Yeah. But it, it just, to, 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 um, Kosha. Kosha school. Yeah, Jisoo Ma. Jisoo, Jisoo, Jisoo. In Japan, they call that as uh, Kosha school. Because if you want to study Abhidharma in, uh, 
that that believe that passed out by the 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 Xuanzang Faoshi, the the famous monk in China. So and then they form a school in Chinese, usually called as a Fa Xiang Zhong, mean the the the. I forgot in Japanese how to pronounce it. Ho, but but in Japanese they don't call that as a Fa Xiang Zhong. They call that a Kosa school. Yeah, Ju Shi Ju Shi 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 Ju Shi Zhong. So because. Uh, if you want to study Abhidharma in that Salavasti Vada system, you have to study the text called Abhidharma Kosha. Okay. Did I bring it? Yeah, that's one of that. There are four volumes of it. This is just one volume. Uh, so this is the English translation. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but then you do have a lot of commentary on that also. And all are untranslated okay, in Chinese. And Tibetan have seven translations. And no, seven commentary on that. But all are untranslated as well. So, uh, but luckily we have a Sanskrit. We found a Sanskrit one. Uh, only forty years ago, I think, that we found a Sanskrit one that in Nepal, somehow. And then uh, certainly, you if you want to read that, you definitely have to either read Sanskrit or then you order read Chinese. Or now you have English translation. But the funny part is, this actually been uh, earlier time was translated by a Catholic priest. Okay. So uh, a lot of earlier, actually, the very important, very, conf I would say, very in intense Buddhist texts were translated by Catholic priests. Yeah. So we joke with them. Actually, they have become a Buddhist, but they just still <laughs> live as a Catholic priest. Yeah. No. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Uh, that's one of the volume. And later you can just have a little look. What are they? You will find really confusing in some way. <laughs> Well, I find it very interesting because a lot of information there. But if you don't have that kind of background, it's really, really, you know, a confusion. All right. So I, uh, unless you have questions, so we will just pass that. Uh, uh, we just skip it. No, I won't say skip. We, we, we can just go to the next one and just read through it first. A number of Indian Abhidharma texts. Maybe I'll read it because that's a lot of the difficult term. A number of Indian Abhidharma texts that belong neither to the Theravadin nor to the Salavasti Abhidharma, also survive in Chinese translation. Okay. In other words, the uh, Abhidharma text is not only just because only these two schools, you know. There are some other Abhidharma texts also, neither belong to, the, doesn't belong to these two, these two schools. And even you find that in Chinese, principally like the Sari, like Sariputra Abhidharma Sastra. And the Haravaman Satya Siddhi Sastra, and then this is certainly is one of the very famous. If, especially if you study Chinese Buddhism, you do find the old master in China, when over, whenever they want to define anything, they usually use this Satya Siddhi Sastra as the main uh, uh, kind of like, uh, kind of quotation. Okay? Uh, even the dictionary also, Later on, when I say the earlier form of dictionary, also actually borrow a lot of terms from there. Uh, I mean the definition from there, from this Satya Siddhi Sastra. We don't know what school they belong. Of course, they are Japan. They do have a lot of scholars study on that, try to find out what school they belong. Anyway, there's no final answer of that, you know. But so they are not Saravastivada. Of course, even they are not the, like a Pali uh, Abhidharma. But in such texts, we do not have a full system in the manner of the Theravadin or the Salavasti uh, Vadin Abhidharma. A, th a third complete system of Abhidharma is, however, elaborated in certain of the works of the Mahayana Yogacara tradition, principally in Asanga Abhidharma Samuchaya. That's what I mentioned. I just, you know, said actually, like Asanga did compose Abhidharma, called Abhidharma Samuchaya. So if you really want to study Yogacara, uh, traditionally in China, first you have to learn this Abhidharma Samuchaya. Then, then you start to read the, what we call the Yogacara, Bhumi Sastra or some other Yogacara school uh, text. Okay? And in Xianzhuang commentary on Vasubandhu's Trimsika, the Cheng Wei Shi Run or Vinyapti Matrata city, why this Yogacara Abhidharma owns much to the Salavasti Vadin system, it also incorporates and adapts certain aspects of other Abhidharma system in order to present a complete Abhidharma in accordance with the Mahayanist outlook 
and the view that mind alone is ultimately real. Okay, that vinyapti alone is ultimately real. Okay, okay. Actually, I don't think that we should translate that mind, the word vinyapti as mind. Vinyapti, it's, it's, uh, mean, shisha in Chinese. Designate, it's ultimately real. Okay, it's not mind. The word vinyapti, it means designate. You know, designate, uh, designation. Designation is ultimate real. All right. Uh, we still have a lot of time, actually. Not a lot, but yeah. Let's say, see the Abhidhamma as a system of Buddhist thought. Now we understand this kind of texture and the historical legends of how the Abhidhamma is. Now, just understand that, say, as a, uh, as a Buddhist thought, what it is, you know, what they try to present to us as an Abhidhamma. Next one, anyone want to read? Do, do you want to read? No. Uh, yeah, can you pass it? All them, yeah. As a system of thought, Abhidhamma is to be contrasted with Sutra. Sutranda. Pali is Sutanta, the system of the sutras or discourses of the Buddha. Sutranta is regarded as the application of the principles of the Buddha's teaching to a particular situation. Each sutra preserved in the Nikaya Agama collections is a discourse delivered by the Buddha or one of his disciples as a particular, at a particular time, in a particular place, and to a particular person or group. Sutranta teachings are embellished with poetic language with similes and metaphors that inspire the listener. The Abhidhamma method, in contrast, presents the Buddha's teachings without masking, uh, without making concessions to time or place or audience, and in technical terms that are precisely defined to ensure analytical exactitude. The contrast between the methods of Sutranta and Abhidhamma coincides in part with other distinctions sometimes made in the text between types of teachings. Some teachings are said to be expressed in terms whose meaning must be determined. Neyata. 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 While others are expressed in terms whose meaning is already determined. Nitarta. Nitarta. Some teachings are expressed in conventional terms. Some verti. Samuti. Others are expressed in alternate terms. Paramata or param, paramata or paramata. The point of these distinctions is to draw attention to the fact that, as we have seen in chapter six, if we come across a Buddhist text that talks in terms of persons and selves, we should not immediately assume that the teaching of no self is being undermined. It is rather that that particular text is talking in conventional terms whose ultimate meaning needs draw, drawing out. The later uh, tradition would regard the Nikaya Agama collections of sutras as in fact containing teachings of both kinds. Okay, thank you. Any question with that? So, I guess, uh, I mean, this is actually a good way to put it, you know, in a way, it's the uh, you know, the sutra, when you say about sutra, it's always start to mention where the Buddha was and then what kind of person he met or maybe what kind of event happened, what happened in there. And then the Buddha respond to, you know, that uh, a particular person or group person or a particular event happened. Uh, so, you know, you have to remember also, uh, even, even though now we try to trace, but we still cannot trace all together, like, just like in old days, you don't have the, the calendar like that. And like nowadays, you say today on the 22nd, right? It's today, 22nd, 23rd? 22nd. Uh, the 22nd of February, we are here to listen to the class. You don't. You, you, in old days, you only say that, okay, we come to this place, and there are how many people there? So, and then you somehow remember that was like, say that yesterday you were in a church, or oh, okay, I went to other places that there was a, a place, and then how many people were there? and then what kind of thing happened, right? 
So uh, actually, uh, it's funny enough uh, how we trace the Buddha life sometimes because luckily there were some people make a little record on what happened in, in between and after. So that's why we know somehow when the Buddha won, uh, on one age, he was there and who was here. Okay. But still, some of them we cannot trace. It, okay. So like that, you know, so that's why in early time the sutra is always put like the Buddha was living there and then and in which place and blah, 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 you know, like, like that. That's how to kind of like keep it when, when the, the Buddha, when, uh, how old was the Buddha, what, roughly what time the Buddha was, okay. But in Abhidhamma, you don't have those kind of record. It's directly just a term, and then there's a definition of a term. So that's why it's exceptionally, uh, comp in contrast, completely no term, no dialogue, no simile, nothing. It just really like just kind of like, some people take it almost like a, a, like a dictionary or like an encyclopedia, but usually encyclopedia, you, you might put something in, some other information also, just like dictionary. But of course the dictionary with a lot of wording and a system there too, you know, that's called the Abhidhamma. And the other thing is also very important, Abhidhamma uh, are highly focused on what they believe in, more on the the, what we call, not the conventional truth, but the ultimate truth, okay? Uh, that's the reason, uh, I, I don't want to go too far now, otherwise people are asking a lot of questions. So the other thing is about, uh, uh, now I learn, don't talk too much, or like little people, based on what I'm talking, and they ask a question. So the other thing is about what we call the nilitata and naitata, okay? Nilitata and naitata mean the Something is, must be determined, and the other is already determined. Uh, can I, uh, the Chinese translation, did they translate properly? Could, could you look at it? Huh? Yeah, that's the that's the term they translate. Yeah. So, unfortunately, in Chinese, when you say ni tata, uh, or that uh, ni tata. Yeah, I mean, Bu Liao Yi, the one especially that uh, Nei Tata, I think. Yeah. Nei Tata means Bu Liao Yi. So, um, like the term, sometimes I, I heard a lot of people explain Chinese that it's not necessarily true. Okay. Actually, they think that it means Bu Liao Yi means like a wrong thing. It's nothing to do with the wrong thing. It just, in English, is better, mean be determined and not determined, you know already determined. Basically it means something need more ex elaboration, mm -hmm. some you don't have to, you know, like that, so, you know. So, but if you look at your know, Chinese, some even later, especially modern people writing, and you, that's why I say don't trust too much, especially in internet, you have to <laughs> <laughs> go back to, <laughs> look at carefully sometimes, okay. All right, so basically it's, uh, uh, that's how they always, in Abhidhamma, especially in Pali system, uh, it have to be defined whether that should be de determined or should be defined again or not. You don't have to define again, basically like that. Okay? And also they believe that most of the Abhidhamma topic is about the ultimate truth, but less about the, 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 uh, the conventional truth. Okay? But the conventional truth, it's not denying it, that, but it just uh, basically, and it's how general belief that Abhidhamma, uh, the, those who believe in Abhidhamma or those who are in a position of Abhidhamma, believe that the sutta use, usually use a language as more like the conventional truth language. But, the, but even though it's not true, but that's how they express it, okay? But then uh, the Abhidhamma is always, almost always using the ultimate truth or language. For example, the Abhidhamma don't say, I'm a person. That's what we call a conventional truth. But in Abhidhamma, or what the Buddhist uh, so-called, when you look at a person, you don't look at the person as a person, but you look at the person as comprises of five components. The material component, you know, and then you have the mental component, like that. But if you look at the two division, that is the men mental and the material, right? But within that, uh, the two, uh, that within the two uh, components, if you look at uh, more in, in a subtle way, then you could divide into five categories. 
that is the, ma the material as one, and then the mantle consists of four parts of it, like the feeling as one part, perception as one part, the mind formation as one part, that means the mind action is as one part, and the, the, what we call the consciousness at the cognize as one part, you know, like that. So, but in Abhidhamma, normally don't, will not take time to discuss about a person, but discuss about the five component, which understand as the ultimate truth, you know. Okay. I get it now? You have some other, other. okay, good. Uh, next one, you want to read? Hmm. Abhidhamma represents the... the uh, I think what is this thing, is it? Am I right? Mm -hmm. What is distinctive about the Abhidharma is that it is an attempt to give a comprehensive statement of the Buddha's teachings exclusively in ultimate terms. A useful analogy, I think, for the relationship between the Abhidharma and the Sutra Sutranda. Sutranta is that of the relationship between a grammar book of a language and the language as spoken and used. In the same way as a grammar book aims at giving a bare account of how a particular language works, its structure and forms of expression based on observation of the actual use of that language. So the Abhidhamma is an attempt to lay bare and describe accurately and precisely, allowing all the circumstances and the eventual deities. The underlying structure of the Dharma is found in the discourses of the Buddha. Indeed, the pages of certain Abhidharma texts with their lists of terms and the definitions might be mistaken for the pages of a grammar book. And in the same way that reading a grammar book might not, may not seem the most inspiring of past times, so too many the study of Abhidharma. Yet a good grammar book may inspire one with impress. Oh, may impress one with its clear and intelligent account of the language. It may bring one to a better understanding of that language and equip one to recognize unexpected forms of words and the modes of expression. In a similar way, the sheer cleverness and the intricacy of aspects of the Abhidharma is impressive in itself. Indeed, one scholar has described the seventh book of the Theravadin Abhidhamma, the Pesana Patana, Patana Casual Relations. Causal. Causal. Not relations. casual, yeah. Okay, sorry. Causal Relations is one of the most amazing productions of the human mind. Moreover, it is the study of Abhidhamma that allows the practitioner to extrapolate from the peculiarities of his own experience to the peculiarities of another's. These days, the study of grammar may not be very fashionable, and some may point out that grammarians and the lexicographers do not always make the best poets, writers, or orators. But just as the theoretical understanding of language cannot be achieved without the study of grammar, so the theoretical understanding of Buddhism must be based in the study of some form of Abhidhamma. Okay, right. The next one. Abhidhamma depends the theoretical content part toward the meditate actually experience in meditation. It can be summed up as the attempt to give a systematic and exhaustive account of the world in terms of its constituent physical and mental events. This enterprise has two aspects. First, to categorize all possible types of events. Secondly, to consider all possible ways in which those metal events can interact and also categorize the various kinds of causal, causal relationships. Okay. 
Are you sure that you want to go and re read in that? Really? You don't feel bored with that? No? Okay, just next, uh, next paragraph. <laughs> Physics, what do you call? Physical and mental events. Yes, you have a question? No, I have a comment. Yeah. Um, I think that is not equivalent uh, the meditation to to write to write the knowledge of the Buddha. <coughs> it's, um, not, I, it's not equivalent. It's not the counterpart mm -hmm. for me because um, first two sentences. Uh, some some things cannot be expressed with words. Uh, and I don't think that we would uh, put it this way. You, you may, that's your standpoint, but I don't think that how the Abhidhamma thing. Uh, because uh, uh, I, I, I maybe I like to put it this way. Actually, sometimes Abhidhamma has invent new terms. They invent the new terms because the terms just want to describe what they experience a meditator okay. get. That's a one part of difficult to learn Abhidharma. Even though when you say Abhidharma, we sometimes think uh, like, uh, okay, most of the Abhidharma ter terminology were borrowed from uh, Sutra, the early text, you could get the Sutra. And then only with that kind of the items, the sutra items, the main item, no person, no event, but just the items, for example, like greed, you know, hatred. And then there are so many different terms of hatred as well. Mm -hmm. And then they categorize it. That term is maybe using as uh, like less, less hatred. And the other term is used as like more harbor hatred in the mind. So they have a kind of, uh, that's what they understand what the sutra is trying to say. Beside that, in meditation, so for example, you have uh, a lot of uh, uh, thing could happen. Now, most important, like for example, like uh, the most popular, like when you do focused meditation, I believe that when you do focused meditation, and then you say that you focus on your breath as one of the technique, and then when you focus on the breath, and but, okay, say the breath and meditation, then Abhidhamma trying to tell you already. In all these Buddhist texts, there are so many techniques there. But breath is one of the techniques. That is also, but if you look at the sutra, the sutra only tells you the breath meditation, how it goes on, what. But we don't have detail, but we just only know the content or the, the man, or you could say the formula of it. But Abhidhamma trying to explain more. Okay. And sometimes even when they explain more, they try to put it, uh, when I say Abhidhamma, it's a very complex, which Abhidhamma, but in general, when we understand the Abhidhamma approach is trying to even invent new terms to try to describe what's happening there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can you give some examples? For example, like uh, the most common example is like when they believe that when you meditate a breath, then you might be start to see the sight, right? Yeah, that's what we call the limita. So that term limita, uh, for example, like the term limita, you never find in the sutta. But you do find this term in the sutta also. Okay, I, I, I think it's... Okay, limita is maybe a little complicated. Say, <laughs> the word body bag, because it's, uh, they say... <coughs> what we call the counterpart side. Certainly you don't find this term in the sutta. But it's believed that when you do meditation up to a certain point, then the counterpart side will appear. Because when it appears, it signifies that your focus are good, are stable. Okay. okay. Uh, but let's say in the sutta, we never mentioned that. It's also believed that when the teacher teach you, when they hear your experience, they can know how they know because they know whether the sight appear or not. Okay. But then the Abhidhamma started to have this very detailed explaining all this. It's kind of, so in earlier time, 
but you, 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 you point a very good question, especially in Chinese, because of the way they learn Abhidhamma in, uh, not necessarily in, uh, I don't know why. I, I know why, I don't want to explain that now. <laughs> uh, somehow they think Abhidhamma is more like scholarly study. But no, on the contrary, actually, Abhidhamma trying to tell what experience you will have by even inventing a lot of terms for that, okay? So it's based on experience, then they have this... They, based on their system, also not just experience, they also, Abhidhamma, there's a good part of it is because they really uphold their system, but sometimes they disagree with other system. But that's another, not necessarily <laughs> kind of like, you know, it's happened human like that. When you have a, your own system, you think that's the only one. The other, you're quite suspicious like that. Yeah. You could say based on the a kind of system, uh, that's why you have so-called the Theravada Abhidhamma, and then you have the Sarawasti Vada. They have their own system, and how we know they are not belong to this because their system is different. For example, why we just mentioned there are some other Abhidhamma which is not in these two system. Why we know because they are different from these two. How we know because they are different from these two system. Okay, but kind of like. They might have a different system of like a reaching so-called enlightenment. And of course their aim is also Abhidhamma. That's why they say the content of Abhidhamma is all ultimate truth, it's not conventional truth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that means all in meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hard work. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe that was a reason why it's one of the reasons why people find it very difficult to learn because it's uh, it's a Dharma, but when you say Dharma, the term Dharma means something we translate as a teaching, something we translate as a phenomenon. However, in meditation, the Dharma become purely in mental understanding. Yeah, kind of like uh, items in the mental part, you know, like you know. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, you want to read the next one. Just to understand. Okay, right. I think uh, we we will just uh, maybe skip that a little bit. Uh, basically, sometimes it's common in Pali. Sometimes when you say Dhamma, it means how to say. Okay, that's the Dharma. I mean, that's the truth of it. Like we, we could say that's the truth. That's the way it. That's the truth. But sometimes when you use the term Dharma as a plural form, it's always trying to analyze the component of what the the thing that we're addressing. You know, for example, like that's one Dharma that will hinder you from not focused. That is a five hindrances, right? So what are these? Dhamma. What are these? What are, what are these dhammas? There are five of them. Like like a doubt, you know, like uh, the, the 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 lust, and uh, like uh, the hatred and so forth. Those. Are. So that's uh, you know that's what the, I think he that's trying to say. But since we are talking about Abhidhamma, so then when we say about the Dharma Dhamma, in Abhidhamma, so it's always referred to that ultimate, mostly ultimate truth. Like when we say, not generally we say, oh, now I feel I cannot focus to read the book. It's just a, a general statement, right? But uh, in Abhidhamma, but certainly this from Sutra also, so that you don't understand as I cannot focus, just per se as, yeah, it's as a fact, as a truth you cannot focus. But why you cannot focus? And actually it might comprise some other Items there, or what it, dharmas there, items, what are they? Say, your, your mind full of the uh, 
find hindrances. I want just say one example, like you, you, if your mind is still craving on the comfort mm -hmm. for your physical for body for comfort, like this chair is not comfortable, mm -hmm. this place is not warm enough, then mm -hmm. how can you focus? <laughs> you cannot focus reading, right? So that is as one of the factors, as one of the dharma. Mm -hmm. Or because you get angry, right? like just now I was very angry. When you're angry, you cannot focus, right? Can you? You cannot read about. You just like you don't. Your anger is there, so right, like that. You know, so <clears throat> basically, mean this is understand. I don't mean this is not in the sutra, of course, in the sutra, but Abhidharma certainly bring that out, right? Believe that, especially the Abhidhamika, the people who are emphasis on important Abhidharma, what we call Abhidhamika. So especially this Abhidhamika, the people who are emphasis on Abhidhamma. They would say, okay, right, whatever we talk is all down to earth, ultimate, right? Because besides when you cannot focus, what else you could find? Besides this five, you cannot find anything else. You know, you know what I'm saying? So people only take it, I cannot focus as a fact. But actually the, the Abhidhamma, look at the ultimate fact. The ultimate fact is you must have five things that <laughs> hindrance you. Mm -hmm. Maybe four things doesn't exist, maybe four, maybe only one, or maybe all five together. But as far as one of them are there, the other rest of you will be, goes, comes together. You know? It's like, like a finger. When you have a hand, you, will, you certainly have five fingers like that. Yeah, okay. Right, that's, uh, that's what he mean. he's just trying to say. Sometimes the word we say, ab dhamma and the dhammas. Okay? Okay, I guess uh, our time is almost there. I would say, uh, I know it's very hard to read this. And this is really difficult subject because you never learn Abhidhamma, then you don't know what you're talking. It's like almost like a castle in the, in the air, I guess. But anyway, I guess that so far reading what we have, at least you get some understanding. Okay, in the Buddhists, they have Sutra, they have Vinaya. And then they have Abhidharma and what the Abhidharma is about. Maybe one day you, you start to read something about Abhidharma. Okay? And if you are, uh, have time, when you go back, you could just like, look at the website or internet, always you can find the book name there, Abhidharma, the Sangaha. You just type that or in English or maybe in Spanish or even in Chinese, maybe they will appear. And you have a look what are they. Okay? And you might enjoy it. Okay? So, uh, the, the, we just all those name. If you don't know, just type and the Abhidhamma text. And if you can bring it out and have a look, then you may have a little sense of what the Abhidhamma looks like. Okay, and what the sutra looks like. So then you might get a better understanding. So okay, right. Thank you for your coming today. So we do have class next week, right? And we do the transfer of marriage before we end the class. Uh, Sagaranda, you are going to say that? Yeah. I mean, it's a is a way when we finish a cloud, we have to dedicate a marriage to, yeah, to what. Okay, sadhu, sadhu. He's very clever. He was chanting a Pali that no one understands. <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for your coming. So I will see you next time, next week. Yeah.